Hello, I'm going to introduce, introduce the first fully self-time SRAM in the world. What is the SRAM? We can simply say SRAM is storage to, to keep data and state for electronic systems such as mobile, laptop, desktop. What's the reason for us to design this fully self-time SRAM? So firstly, let us see what's the problem of the conventional SRAM and how it works We're using a read, reading as an example to show how the conventional SRAM works and what's the problem for it. Normally, the SRAM, conventional SRAM works based on clock cycles. In the first half clock cycles, it's used for pre-charge, and the second half clock cycles using for the reading the data. That means the SRAM is working based on the worst timing assumption. And also, we don't really know the data is reading out all the data writing in. As different VDD, they have different frequency of clock cycles. That means because that means we need set set up a different clock cycles for for it. Nowadays, not only low power but also the power efficiency. And that means the memory we need it working in very big working rates. Here we did some experiment to convert to compare the conventional logic with memory. We can see now big now big difference between the conventional logic with memory, especially when the VD going below. 0.7 or what? So we propose a method for self time as well, which can adaptive automatically adaptive the variable VDD. How our self time as well works? We're using a writing as an example. Here we have after we receive writing commands, we pre charge it. After we pre-charge, finished pre-charge, we withdraw the pre-charge signal and then we open the WL to let one bit line will be discharged to zero. After that, we write, we enable the writing, write driver, the data will be propagated to the memory cell. Eventually, the bit line, we compare the bit line will, with our data. If they are equals, we finish our writing. This is a simulation result. The first is a variable VDD. We can see when the VDD is low, we take a long time to finish our work. When the VDD is high, we take less time to finish our work. And then after that, we fabricate our SRAM. In this chip, we have one key memory bank, and also we have some built-in testing circuits. In this built-in testing circuits, we have two parts. One is we provide the interface with the outside of the chip. That means it's compatible with the conventional memory. And also we have some built-in testing circuits. It's a fully closed control, uh, testing circuits, which can writing and reading the memory and the compare results. If any fault happens, well, the, the closed loop will stop. This demo shows external writing to the memory bank. So this signal is a is writing request. This signal is writing up. This is data. We can see now the VDD is 1.2. There is a normal VDD for 90 nanometer technology. We can, now I start to tune the VDD. You you will see what happens. Okay, you can see the now the VDD going down to 1.20. Six and then point one. We can see a long with tune the VD, the amplitude of the waveform is, is also reduced.
Yeah, now already below one quart. You can see the shape of getting wider compared to compare with the Pro S1. That means when we reduce the VD, the circuit is working slower. Okay, this demo shows a closed loop testing testing uh, experiment. The waveform on the scope is uh, two address uh, bits. You can see now the way the voltage pulsed by voltage is 1.1 volt. We can now now I'm going to tune down the VDD. We can see what happens. When we tune down along with the tune down the VDD, we can see the amplitude of the waveform is also going down. And and also getting slower the the signals. Eventually after certain after our VD going below some certain level, our circuits will be stuck at layer, but it's not permanent fault. Okay, so now at point six point six six. So now let's see after we go back we need to go back to the certain level what happened. So I tune the VD up to point eight, so that means our circuit is working again. 